On our website at omma.ok.gov, there will be a verbiage saying that we are accepting applications. There will be a button that will say apply now. So when applicants hit that button, they'll be directed to our application submission portal, which looks like this. So the first thing that applicants will have to do is they'll have to register and make an account. So it's very important when they make the account that they ensure all information they enter is 100% accurate. This information cannot be changed. So you'll see the applicant will need to enter their first and last name, provide an email address. This should be an email address that the applicant monitors regularly as this is the email address where all notifications for their application will be given to. They will also be asked to enter a phone number and then select which type of application they want to start. So either a patient or caregiver application or a business application. They will then need to enter their date of birth. Again, it's very important this is entered correctly. They will then need to provide a password for their account. They will then need to accept the terms and conditions of the site and hit the green register button. So that is the first thing that applicants will need to do. After that, they will get an email in the email account they provided asking them to verify their account. That's that screen on the left. They'll hit that green verify button and that will then take them to the screen on the right where it will indicate the account has been verified and they will be able to sign in. So you see now we're in the sign-in screen. They will have to enter in that email address they provided and their password. And at that point, they can hit that green sign-in button and they'll be able to enter into their account. In the event that someone forgets their password, they can click that green forget password button. They can enter that email address and be sent a password reset email. So when the applicant signs in, they'll see a welcome screen here that gives them some basic information and that support email address. And then they'll be able to create their application. So we'll click the Create Application button. They'll select the application type, so patient or caregiver, since that's what I indicated at the beginning. And then they'll hit Create Application, that green button at the bottom. Then you will see the application itself loads into the system. So I'm doing a patient application. You'll see there are a number of tabs at the top. General information, contact information, physician information, questions, documents, payment, and review. So we're on the general information tab. And applicants can save information on each tab and move between them. So first they will need to enter their name indicate if they are a minor or not. If they do say that they are a minor, you'll see that fields will load for parent or legal guardian information to be provided. For this demonstration, we will do an adult patient application. So we'll click yes. So you'll see uh, the phone number is required. Date of birth is already entered. They'll need to indicate if it's a two year license or temporary, I selected two year. They will need to indicate what kind of ID document they are providing that ID number, and the expiration date of their ID document. Issue and state will always be Oklahoma, but that will need to be entered in. Then you can hit save and next. So the next tab the applicants will see is contact information. So they'll need to provide their street and mailing address. There is a verify address uh, function where they can provide a verified address. That ensures that all mail that we send gets to the applicant. So we encourage applicants to verify their address in the system. And you see they can copy their street address to their mailing address. Next is physician information. 
This is where applicants will enter information that their doctor has provided in the physician recommendation form. So they'll be taking that form that their doctor signed and entering in some information from it. So you see it's the doctor's name and contact information, as well as their license number, NPI number, and then the date that the physician signed the form, with a reminder that that has to be within 30 days of application. There's optional fields here. If the doctor indicated any medical conditions, the applicant could enter those in. And then finally, the physician address. Next is the questions tab. So you'll see the applicant will need to agree to certain statements, attesting it's true and correct, uh, understanding that we will provide information as required by state and federal laws. Uh, they will be asked if they are enrolled in Medicaid or Medicare. If they select yes, they're reminded they will need to upload documentation of that enrollment. They will also be asked if they plan to use a caregiver. If they select yes, you'll see there's caregiver information they will need to provide. That includes the caregiver's name, phone number, and email address. Finally, they will need to sign the application by typing in their full legal name and providing the date of their signature. And then again, they hit Save and Next, go to the next tab. Then there's a Documents tab. This is the tab where applicants will upload all of their supporting documentation. So you'll see first is the digital photo with a link that tells them what all the requirements are if they have questions. So you can hit that Upload New button. When you do that, you'll be able to choose a file. It'll need to be an image file since it's a photo. When you select that file, the system will allow you to zoom in or zoom out or move the photo to make sure that it's cropped correctly, as this is the photo that will be on the ID card for the applicant. So you'll see I can move that photo around, make sure the top of the head is visible, and make sure it looks like I want it to look on my ID card. And then I hit the green Upload button. Now you'll see when I click that link, the file is there. You'll see over to the left, I can delete the file, I can replace it, or I can download it. So next is proof of residency. So you'll see I have two documents there. So applicants will need to provide the, both the front and the back of their ID document. So there's the front of the driver's license and then the back. And applicants can preview their files so they can zoom in to make sure it looks clear. Oh, MMA staff will need to be able to clearly see the documentation. Now there's proof of identity. Applicants can provide the same document for proof of identity and proof of residency if it is an Oklahoma driver's license or an Oklahoma identification card, but they will need to upload it twice. They will need to upload it both for residency and identity. Next is the physician recommendation form. You'll see the form is there. It's filled out. My doctor has signed and dated it. And then finally, since I indicated that I was enrolled in Medicaid or Medicare, I'll need to provide that documentation as well. So next is payment and review. Credit card is the only payment option that will be checked. They'll hit Save and Next, and then they will be able to review their application. So you'll see a bunch of green check marks. That's what you want to see. You'll want to check and make sure there are no red X's, because those are items that need to be addressed. So there's one there. I need to make sure that my photo meets the requirements. I check that box. Everything else is green. So I will be allowed to go to pay and submit. This will take me to the payment portal. Once I get to that point, you can see the charge is at the top. Since I indicated I was on Medicaid or Medicare, it's the reduced $20 fee plus the credit card processing fee. Just like any other credit card payment, you'll need to enter your name and your address. It's important that you enter an email address if you want to receive a receipt. Otherwise, you will not. After you enter that information, you'll enter your credit card information. So again, just like any other credit card transaction, the credit card number, the expiration date, the security code.
You'll hit next. You'll be able to review it, make sure it's what you want. You hit submit payment. You review and confirm, click OK. And then it will take you to the next screen. It may take it a few moments to process your payment. Don't go back in your browser or switch tabs or anything. You'll see now at the top, it says my application has been submitted. It has an application reference code as well and my date of application. So that's what applicants will see if they successfully submitted their application and that reference code is important to keep on hand. So after applicants submit their application, they should check their email inbox. They will see an email saying you've submitted your application. Again, it has that application reference number. Also, the support numbers and emails um, are there as well as the link to log in. So that's what applicants will get initially. Once OMMA staff have time to review the application, again, they need to monitor their email inbox. They will receive one of three notifications. One will be you are approved for a license, the one on the left. They may receive an email that says, we need more information or corrected information. So that one says, um, there's a reason not processed, invalid ID. At that point, as an applicant, I can log back into my application. I can fix that issue and resubmit. I will not have to pay the application fee again. In the event that staff determine that the applicant is ineligible for a license, they will receive a denial email. Denial and approval letters will also be mailed to the applicants. So I also want to point out a few of the features of the system. So you see there's a help button. In that help button, you'll see there's a link to the training manual. They click that. There's a manual they can reference if they're having any trouble with their application. It has screenshots. It walks them through what to do to submit an application. It also has, again, those support phone numbers and email addresses. Another thing that applicants can do is easily see uh, the status of their applications. So on the left, there are some navigation bars. I can see my new patient registration applications. I may have multiple. I can edit or delete them. I can see what the status is as well. Also something I can do in the system. I can add an individual. We'll see there's a warning screen just to make sure that's what um, individuals want to do. But say if I want to help my grandfather, he's not very computer savvy, I can enter his name and date of birth. I can create an application for him. I can also create a new business application. I just enter that business name and then hit create account. And you'll see now at the top left, I can navigate between those accounts. So I could switch to my business account by clicking that button. And then I could create a new application for a business there. I also want to point out that the application system is mobile friendly. So these are screenshots taken from my phone. I have an iPhone. On the left, you can see those navigation bars are still available. You can see that the applicant can go through those tabs on the phone too and enter information. Also, you can upload documents using your phone. You can take a picture of your document and it will upload into the system for most phones. Also, just a reminder that Chrome and Safari are the best web browsers to use, but also Firefox Edge and Internet Explorer 11 will also work. So if an applicant is approved for a license, um, this is what it will look like. This is a sample. That's an adult patient card. And there's a minor card, a caregiver card, and then you'll see there's a temporary card as well. So that is how a patient applies, patient or caregiver. So next I will show you how a business would apply. It's the same system. It looks pretty much the same, just some different information needs to be provided. So I'm creating a new account for a business. Then you'll see that, again, the application itself loads. There are a number of tabs, general information, persons of interest, location information, primary contact, questions, documents, payment, and review. So first is general information. So I'll enter the business name, the license type, so dispensary, grower, or processor, the trade name, the fax number, the website, 
and the operating hours are optional. They will need to provide the phone number and the business structure. Next is persons of interest, where they will provide information about owners, members, managers, and board members, including their name, contact information, their ownership, and their identification information. I can easily add or remove persons of interest by that, that green add persons or remove. So in this instance, there's two owners. One has 60% and one has 40. And again, address information is required and, and can be verified. Next is location information of the business itself, the physical address as well as the mailing address. If applicants need help figuring out the coordinates piece, there's a link to help them there. Next is the primary contact. So that's the primary contact for the business. They'll provide their contact information and title. And again, they can verify their address. Next is the questions. Again, they'll need to agree to certain statements in order to submit their application. And next is the Documents tab. So again, here is where the applicants will upload their supporting documentation. Affidavit of Lawful Presence is the first one. Again, you have those same functions, delete, replace, or download. Next is background checks. You hit the Upload New button. Again, you choose a file. In this instance, you have to indicate the person of interest so we can easily track who the documentation is applying to. And now you see that that document is there. Next is Certificate of Good Standing. Here's an example of the background check, just the form itself. Since I'm an LLC, I'll need to provide a Certificate of Good Standing. That's provided there. Then I'll need to provide the uh, driver's license or state ID and proof of residency for each person of interest. So you can see it lists which person it applies to. And finally, the ownership list. And again, there's a helpful link if applicants have questions as to what they need to provide. And this will show you the template that we provided. Some file types you can't preview, you will have to download, such as Excel. And you'll see there is my ownership list. So I have all my documents uploaded. So again, next is the payment piece. Credit card is the only option. Again, applicants will be able to review their application, make sure there are no red X's, and that all information is correct. And then just like the patient experience, you'll be directed at that time to the payment portal. So you'll see the business fee as well as the credit card processing fee. And that's the end of that piece. That's how an applicant would go and apply for their license either on the business side or the patient or caregiver side.